What's up, everybody? It's Nick from Who Dat Travel. Now, we just got back from a New Year's cruise to Mexico on the Disney Magic. That's right. We finally took a Disney cruise. Uh, and when I say we, I mean myself, little man, the wife, and even grandma and her gentleman suitor came. So we had a lot of eyes to tell you what we thought about our trip on the Disney Magic. Uh, and we're going to go through a bunch of different stuff. We're going to go through the location of where we took off at. Uh, we're going to go to the check-in experience, rooms, dining, the service, the ship, all of the things that we thought. And, of course, stay to the end to get my honest feelings about the entire trip. Let's start off by talking about the itinerary of this voyage. Now, th as I said, this was over New Year's. So this was the day after Christmas, the 26th of December, and we got back on the 2nd. So it was a six-night cruise. And one of the reasons that we decided to go on this cruise was, well, one, it was New Year's. And two was we had three full days at sea. Now you're going, well, wait a minute. Why would you want that many days at sea? Well, this is a Disney cruise. And one of the biggest things is all of the entertainment and the magic. Yes, pun is intended on that boat because we had plenty of time on the boat those three full days that was one of the reasons that we chose this cruise so overall we really liked our itinerary so i'm going to give that a five out of five for our itinerary next let's move on to location all right what i mean by location is where we took out of our cruise departure was out of galveston texas now to be honest there's not a great spot to be able to fly into galveston they have a very small airport so the closest airport is actually going to be the Houston airport, which is about a 90 minute ride. Now, we decided to use Disney's transportation uh, and we flew in a day early. We then spent the night in the Houston area. We actually went to the Rocket Center, which was a lot of fun, uh, and then got up a little bit early and went back over to the airport. And then we were able to catch the bus ride over to Galveston. So overall, it was all right. Uh, I guess they are actually expanding the Galveston cruise port, but also the Galveston airport. Uh, so th in the coming years, this should be a lot better. But overall, I gave the cruise departure a three out of five just because it was a little bit difficult to go in and out of. Moving on to the check-in experience. Well, to be honest, it was like any other check-in experience I've really ever had with cruises. It is in that sparse warehouse style place that just... Yeah, it, well, it's not real welcoming and inviting. It's not what I really expected from Disney. But at the same point, I do understand that other cruise lines are probably using that building so they can't do the grandiose Disney style experience in that area. So you do still have your pictures and all that kind of stuff. But one of the things that really surprised me was just how punctual they were. If you are not there during your check-in time, they don't let you in. So ours was, I think it was like 10.30 to, or 11.30, I think it was. Uh, and we were there at like 11.35 and we were let in, but no one else, they check what time you're supposed to be on that ship. No one else is let in unless you have that time period, which was kind of nice. Now, one thing I did feel, I will say almost a little pressured by the porters. They're trying to get all the people's luggage on board and that's great. But it was, I was in such a hurry that I ended up giving them my carry on, which had like my magic bands and all of my chargers and all that kind of stuff in it. Uh, so I ended up having to wait for that. And that actually ended up costing me a ton of time later because my magic band plus wouldn't work because they weren't able to do it right at check-in, which actually my wife had hers and that still didn't work. So we ended up having to go to the uh, guest relations. Uh, and of course the first day guest relations is absolutely packed. Uh, so overall that was, uh, that was kind of a miss on my part. Uh, but overall I'll give the check-in experience really a four out of five. After we checked in, our rooms were not ready yet. So we ended up going down to Rapunzel's Royal Table to have a bit of lunch. And overall, I'll talk about dining here just in a moment after we talk about rooms. But overall, it was very nice. Moving back to the rooms though. So after lunch, we did have the notification that our rooms were ready. Uh, my 
mom or grandma and her gentleman suitor had an inside room uh, and we had the deluxe inside stateroom uh, which is about 30 square feet bigger now it did have a little spot to sit down it did have uh, a little bit bigger area for storage which overall with three people was rather nice now of course it does have a split bathroom as well and i've never had a split bathroom before uh, this has a sink and a toilet in one room and then in another room it did have a shower and a sink so with three people it truly was nice to have that kind of split up uh give us a little bit more room uh to be able to get out of the way if somebody was trying to get something in the closet or that kind of thing so overall uh, we didn't mind the inside stateroom, but we did enjoy the extra 30 square feet with the little one. Uh, so overall, I would definitely spring for the inside stateroom. I don't know if I would actually spring for a higher one. We've had balconies, we've had suites, uh, we've had portholes on different cruise lines. And overall, um, you kind of get, get to the same spot as long as you're okay in kind of being on top of each other once in a while. Uh, you know, I don't mind the inside staterooms. Uh, don't get me wrong. Space is nice, but honestly, I'm not spending that much time in the room, even with the little guy. Uh, you know, we're there for sleeping. We're there for uh, nap time. Other than that, we didn't spend a whole lot of time in our room. But overall, I am going to give it a four out of five. Uh, they could have improved on a couple things. Uh, you know, there was some minor disrepair in the room, which is to be expected since you, we were on the original Disney cruise ship, The Magic, uh, and it's 25 years old this year. Okay, I already talked about dining a little bit, but let's move on to officially talk about dining. Now, on The Magic, we do have rotational dining. In other words, there are three main spots for dinner, which are Animator's Palette, Lumiere's, and Rapunzel's Royal Table. Now, these restaurants you will move to throughout the evenings, and your dining staff actually moves with you. So the nice thing is there, if you nor normally order lemonade, well, they're going to know that, and they're going to bring a lemonade to you almost immediately. Uh, it was very nice that they got to know you, got to know what you liked, got to know what the little guy liked, and, of course, uh, would cater to that. Overall, the food was very good. Um, it is definitely a kind of an upscale dining. Uh, for the kids, they did kind of have a limited menu. I was a little disappointed with that. Uh, it was usually pizza and chicken fingers and just your normal kid stuff. Uh, minus, I didn't see like spaghetti. All, of, all the time that we had spaghetti, it was like a turkey based and it was just odd to me. Uh, but there also is casual dining for those of you who don't want to sit down. Uh, that's the Duck Inn Diner, which had burgers and dogs. Of course, they had Pinocchio's Pizza. Uh, Daisy actually had a spot, too, with like wraps and that kind of stuff. Room service actually is included as well. Uh, but there was a kind of a surprise to me is Cabana's, which is their buffet. And the buffet really was a lot better than I anticipated. Now, I am i don't enjoy breakfast buffets, uh, so generally we didn't go there. I think I went there one morning and was kind of disappointed. Uh, but Cabana's for lunch always had crab legs and shrimp, but actually they had a rotational at the end of it, uh, all the way to the back uh, of what day it was. And honestly, their Indian food was some of the best Indian food I've had in a very long time, I mean, specialty restaurant Indian food uh, sometimes was not as good as what I had on board. Uh, so I was very, very happy with that day uh, for lunch. But I will also say that Cabana's kind of surprised me in the fact that it's not open for dinner. Uh, overall, the dining experience uh, was nice uh, on, on Disney. Uh, I was kind of surprised at the people dressing up. I really thought this would be a more of a Disney based, no one cared what they looked like, uh, but they did dress up a little bit more than I anticipated. Uh, now granted, we were there for New Year's Eve, so that was of course a fancy night for a lot of people. Um, I did not go to the adult only dining at Palo. Uh, we were there to have a special time with the family, uh, so we didn't do that kind of thing. Overall, I would give dining, well, a four out of five. I'm gonna move on to service, and let's be honest, Disney cast members are always just a little bit better. The way that they take care of your kids, the way that they take, take care of you. The boat, well, was pretty much spotless and cleaned all the time. Overall, 
it really was a wonderful time on the boat and the service was, well, second to none. And just to clear it up, I had seen a couple reviews that said basically some of these service people would kind of beg for tips. I honestly, I did not see that. Um, they did ask you to make sure that you did the, the surveys, uh, which are of course important because that gives them feedback. So other than that, they really weren't begging for tips. Uh, we did tip our stewards a little bit extra uh, because we felt that they did go above and beyond. So overall, service, 5 out of 5. All right, let's move on to the ship. Now this is going to be a little bit rapid fire. Now the condition of the ship, well, over 25 years, it had, does have a little bit of wear and tear here and there, but overall it was really well kept. Uh, we had a couple problems in our stateroom, but overall, again, well kept and really we did see cast members always cleaning and always taking care of the ship now the entertainment on the ship of course there are live shows we did have the sail away party the pirate night party which was always a ton of fun for us we had new years so we did actually have two sets of fireworks on the boat and i won't lie there's a part of me that's doing risk mitigation saying oh wait a minute fireworks boat but truly it is a really a sight to see and of course, Disney does it very well. And of course, there were the live, we're going to call them musicals on board. We did see all three of them and we did have a great time there. Now, of course, they do have movies on deck. Uh, my little one loved swimming and then being able to watch a movie at the same time. And of course, there was the Buena Vista Theater, which had movies that were out or just re recently released uh, that you could watch as well. Now, of course, the, all around the ship, there are character meet and greets. My favorite part were the roaming characters. We would randomly see characters out and about messing around with people, Goofy being Goofy and Chip and Dale out on the, uh, the track. It really was amazing to see all of the characters just out and about. Now, there were lines for some of the princesses and that kind of thing. But overall, if you would compare lines at the park, to lines there, well, they were way shorter on the boat. One of the things that really surprised us on the boat was the youth clubs. Our little guy honestly asked to go back to them. Now, there are a couple different youth clubs. They do have the Small World Nursery, uh, which is from zero to three years of age, and there is an extra charge for that. There's the Oceaneers Club, which is from three to ten, the Edge Club, which is for t the tweens, and then the Vibe, which is for teens. Now, we only did really a experience with the Oceaneers Club. Uh, there were two of them. Uh, there was the club and there was the, I don't, to be honest, I don't remember the name of it. But both of them were uh, available for the 3 to 10-year-olds, and they would actually transfer your child back and forth. So that kind of surprised us a little bit. And your kids actually do have the ability to, we'll say, call back to you uh, through the Messenger app and asked to be picked up. Um, our little guy actually was worried about us not having fun without him, so he, uh, he asked to be picked up one of the days. Overall, youth clubs were a fantastic thing, and our little guy actually got to see characters that we didn't even see. Next up, the pools. A uh, great time. We spent a lot of the time with the Aqua Lab uh, and the Goofy's Pool and the Nephew Splash Zone, uh, and they, of course, had a water slide there that my little guy liked, and we would just go around and around and around. Uh, also, there was the Aqua Dunk, which is the larger drop water slide. I did go on that once, but to be honest, I really actually liked the big yellow water slide a little bit better. Uh, overall, the pools were very nicely maintained. We did find out a little bit of information that in the kids one, they will remove everybody from the water for about 10 minutes. Uh, and that's a safety check. But the safety is actually for your kids to go to the bathroom. Uh, if there is an accident in the pool, they actually have to drain the pool. And it takes uh, a couple hours, uh, up to even a day, they had said, to be able to bring all the water back and have the pool uh, operational again. So they actually closed down the pool uh, once an hour. Moving on to the sports and fitness. Now, there was the Wild World of Sports, uh, which is on the top deck. I didn't use it. We did walk through it. Uh, it was actually, I think, raining the day that I did the filming for that. Uh, and, of course, there is a gym on board, which, again, we didn't use a, 
all either. Uh, our gym was actually doing, I think my max was 62 flights of stairs in a day. So uh, we take the stairs. We try not to use the elevators. So overall, uh, the, the boat, I'm going to have to give it a four out of five. Nice boat. It's a smaller boat. Uh, not as grand as some of the ones that we've been on previously, but overall, uh, it, it did have a nice cozy feel to it. Finally, let's talk about my overall opinion of the cruise. Overall, it was a very nice cruise. It was great that we had three days on the boat to just actually soak in all of the Disney experience, but I will admit it wasn't the full Disney experience that I was expecting. Now, as you know from my channel, I go to Disney a lot. I am an annual pass holder. We go out to California to Disneyland at least once a year. I love that feeling of Disney and how they pull on your heartstrings. I didn't get that from most of the experience on the boat. The shows, they were cute. They did pull on the heartstrings a little bit. The deck shows, though, were just uh, kind of a party atmosphere. Now, I get it, but... The the fireworks, well, they just didn't have that. I, the They had the availability of New Year's to really kind of throw some of the, the Disney magic, yes, pun is intended, at you, but I just didn't feel any of that. Uh, it was really super nice to be able to see the characters, but overall, this is not a substitute for going to the parks. Now, it is a great add-on. We saw characters that I will never see probably in a million years or get their autograph, like Hook Hand from Tangled. I will probably never see him in a Disney park. However, we got to meet him. We got to have him sign the little guy's autograph book. And overall, those things were just fantastic. Uh, getting uh, little guys, getting to meet Stitch, getting to meet Thor, uh, getting to meet Spider-Man, all of that, very, very cool. But if you are looking to completely replicate the park, that is not the spot to go. Uh, if you're adding, looking to add on to the park, absolutely. Uh, if you've never gone to the parks and want to have those interactions with characters, perfect spot to go. Uh, I would suggest that watch the movies before you go. For instance, we, we had Lumiere's. You probably want to know who Lumiere is uh, so you understand the dining room area. You definitely, for the, our trip, you want to see Rapunzel. You, there is a lot going on, including Pascal being hidden. Uh, it's just you definitely want to know your Disney facts and trivia and these shows before you go on. Overall, uh, will we go on another Disney cruise? Well, to be honest, we've already booked another one. So, yes, we're going to go on another Disney cruise. Uh, I definitely would like to see the other boats. I'd like to see the bigger boats and the newer boats. Uh, we did definitely get a lot done. We enjoyed our time on the boat and off of the boat. Uh, but overall, I, you know what? It's a fantastic cruise. Are you paying more? Yes, you are paying more for the Disney experience. But just don't expect that you're going to have the Disney experience that you do at the park. It is slightly different. Now, I hope this helped you out. If it did, help me out by hitting that subscribe button and also the thumbs up that you, you like the video because that really does help out the channel. And of course, hit the bell to be notified when I release new content when you hit subscribe. With that being said, I hope everybody had a magical day and we'll see you real soon, everybody. Thanks. Bye-bye.